from Tel Aviv University and IBM, Eli Schwartz. And he will present his new 2018 paper, paper, Delta Encoder, an effective sample synthesis method for few shot object recognition. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, so I'm Eli Schwartz. Uh, I'm presenting our paper from New Ips last year. Uh, Delta Encoder is a sample synthesis method for few shot object classification. Uh, it's a work done in IBM with collaboration, uh, in collaboration with uh, Tel Aviv University and the Technion. So what is a few shot learning? Unlike uh, fully supervised classification, we are given, uh, where we are given uh, many samples for a given set of uh, categories and we are tested on the same categories. Here, we, the test is done on novel categories unseen during training. The test is, is constructed of episodes. Each episode, if it's a five way, so it's a five novel categories, and we get, for instance, one example per category, and we are given query images. We need to assign them to the correct uh, category. Um, so our method is, uh, belongs to the family of augmentation, data augmentation, or generating samples. So given the few samples we have, we want to generate more samples that are then used to train a classifier. Here we see uh, two categories, golden retriever and wild African dog. The only labeled samples we get are the blue ones, and the images with colored border are the ones our method were ab was able to correctly classify. You can see that the two categories are not uh, trivially separated, and some of, for instance, one, some of the golden retrievers are closer to the wild African dog uh, anchor than to the golden retriever anchor, yet our generated samples were able to bridge this gap. So how we do it? We have a, an autoencoder-like uh, architecture, but uh, with a twist. So the, uh, the encoder gets as input two samples. I should mention that these samples are feature vectors, not the raw images. So we have, uh, uh, the encoder gets two samples belonging to the same category. In this case, the category, in this example, the category would be a boy, and we have a reference image, which is a neutral face boy, and uh, the target image, which is a smiling boy. The encoder job is to encode the delta or the transformation between the reference and the target. So in this case, it would be neutral to smiling. The decoder gets the same reference image, and the delta, and it, its job is to recover the target image. So by applying the neutral to smiling transformation on the, on the reference image, it will recover the smiling boy. Uh, the, the test time, at test time, we sample random deltas and use the decoder to apply them to a reference uh, novel image image from a novel category. Um, by repeating this process many times, we generate many uh, new samples for the novel category. Actually, we are not using random Zs or random deltas. We sample random pairs of images belonging to the same training set category and extracting from them the, the random deltas. So, uh, th this way we make sure the deltas we are using are more valid ones, they're not just random. Um, then we use all these generated samples to train a simple linear classifier. You can think of, of it like we are taking a ResNet, we are cutting the classifier head using this as an embedding, uh, embedding model. In this embedding space, we are augmenting the little data we have, and then we retrain the, the linear classifier with the augment, augmented data. By doing so, we observe uh, 
a substantial improvement over uh, state of the art on several uh, few short learning benchmarks, namely Mini ImageNet, CIFAR 100, Caltech and Caltech Birds, with a 3.6 improvement over uh, state of the art. Here we can see that as we generate more samples, accuracy improves, suggesting we keep generating meaningful information, useful information, um, up, up to the saturation at around 1,000 uh, generated samples. We can also see that 100 synthesized samples are equal to around five real samples. So obviously not every sample we generate is as useful, but uh, they are useful to, after generating many of them, we get to the performance of using few real images. We can visualize uh, our generated samples. Here the red crosses are the one shot per category we got, and the colored clouds around them are the generated samples. So we can see that first of all, they nicely divide the space and also that they are not a naive uh, or trivial Gaussians around the, the anchors. So we are not generating just noise. If we zoom in on a one class, in blue it's the reference we got, and we visualize the generated samples by looking, we are generating feature vectors. To visualize them, we are, go, we are looking for the nearest neighbors in a set of real images, so this uh, these are the visualization of the generated feature vectors. We can see that we generate a wide range of different images. Some of them are even quite far from the reference we begin with. Thank you. Thank you, Eli. Uh, any quick question? So, Maybe I'll ask something. Uh, you did lots of experiments with uh, many classes. Uh, how was the variance between the classes? Are there classes that are more difficult to learn from just a few examples? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure how it's. Uh, how it the, 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 the most important question is how how close is the novel class to our training classes? Uh -huh. So the lo the larger is the shift between the domains performance will obviously suffer. Okay, makes sense. Let's uh, thank the speaker again. Thank you. And our next speaker is uh, Ranan Yecheskel